Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we'll be discussing on one of the testing fundamentals, the software testing fundamentals topic itself. What will you do if you don't get the requirements clarity or if the requirements that are provided to you are not sufficient? So this is one more video that we'll be adding in the playlist of becoming a software tester from zero to hero. So let me share my screen. So, so this is a very, very important interview question as well. You would get this question for sure in the interview. And not only that, but even if you are working in some particular projects or within the companies, it becomes very important for you to explain this particular question. We'll go to the approach for testing if the requirements are not available, what all things you should do. But before that, let us also understand in which circumstances does it happen that the requirements are not available itself. So if you are a fresher, if you are looking this video for the first time, then you might be thinking, sir, when will this thing happen that you don't get requirements at all? So there are kinds of projects in which you hardly get requirements. So let's say if there are some experimental projects or there are some projects in which there is an R&D kind of things happening. So the end goal is to explore the possibilities and get the result. If the result is there, then proceed ahead. Or if you don't get the result, then again go for the next exploring exploration of the opportunity and then take up that advantage and then proceed for the next step. So such kind of projects are there. These are called as experimental projects. Then there are certain projects which are related to proof of concept projects. So POC kind of a project, right? Wherein you would be doing some kind of an R&D. If you get success, then you will be telling to the client, yes, we have got success. Give us a project. So those kind of things where you will be going for technical feasibility and all those things. So in these kind of projects, at times the requirements are not available. There might be also instances when you have got the projects and you had the business analyst from maybe the client side or maybe from your company side but that business analyst then later on went away he left the job or he is no longer available or let's say during when the project started the business analyst was there he was documenting something but that documentation is not at the place so all these things will lead up to the ultimate thing that the requirements are not available itself so in this case what would be your approach for testing? So let me take you to various things. So the very first point that you should understand here is you have to communicate with your stakeholders. So this is with respect to QA leads. If you are a lead kind of a person, if you are a senior kind of a person, then what you have to do is you have to communicate with your stakeholders. You have to connect with them. You have to collaborate with them. You have to understand the the product, the project behind, the agenda behind this project. What is the significance of this project? Now, if you are a junior team member or if you are a fresher, then connect with QA leads, connect with your QA managers, connect with the test managers and get some product knowledge, get the understanding of why <clears throat> the requirement is not there. And still, if the requirement is not there, so that's a challenge. But now, how to get the knowledge and to test further so one thing is that the requirement is not there but then what becomes important is to gather the information about the functionality to gather that product knowledge and to establish that kind of learning curve for yourself so you have to learn and you have to test then yes going on the same line you have to do exploratory testing so in the last video we had covered what is the difference between exploratory testing and ad hoc testing so you will be learning the behavior you will be learning the flow of the application you would be documenting it you will be identifying if any inconsistencies or any unexpected things are happening so that is what you call this exploratory testing then you will be going for collaboration you would be collaborating among your team members among the developers among your testers and you'll be educating each and every one okay this is as per the best practices this is as per the standards so what you can do let's say you are supposed to test a 
e-commerce based website which is not having any kind of a requirement so you know in an e-commerce website you have a search functionality you have an add to, add to cart functionality you have a payment functionality so all those things are available with you so what you will do is you will identify similar domain kind of websites which are available online and you will try to trace the behavior you will try to understand the behavior of those particular websites and you will try to implement the same things here you will validate if your project's website is as per the best practices and standards or not looking at the similar things that are available in the market or in the live environment knowledge sharing so it becomes very important that you are sharing the knowledge with other testers at times you have to share the knowledge with the development team and it, at times you have to update stakeholders also that this is how the flow has been captured here this is how it the, this is the behavior here this is how this functionality has been documented here so that's how you will do so you have to collaborate with other testers and the stakeholders you have to share knowledge and insights and that's how you will grow together so even though the requirement is not available so maybe two things you got an understanding and you shared with the team two things some other team member got an understanding two things couple of things some other team member got an understanding and so on and so forth you have the you get an idea of overall product itself because then you will be able to connect the dots right then comes user feedback and observation and error guessing so these two things are very important so from the user feedback and observation you will identify how users are interacting that functionality how they are using that application on the same lines you have to write those kind of test cases those kind of test scenarios so, so you have to bridge the gap between the end user and your qa team from the requirement perspective if requirement is available so you'll be writing the test cases so you know how the end user is going to test but if the requirement itself is not available you will have to capture the behavior of how the end user is using that application you'll have to jot down all those observations you'll have to note down all those kind of points and accordingly you have to proceed ahead for the testing last and not the least is your error guessing so whichever functionalities you have tested so far you would be doing error guessing based on those particular websites or based on your experience based on your exposure to the field of software testing and accordingly you will be proceeding ahead so you have to use error guessing technique to anticipate to forecast if any potential issues are going coming or not right and accordingly you would be taking it up so let's say in an interview also you might get this question that if we give you a project in which we don't have much requirements then what will you do so you can cover all these points so a quick short summary for this video is for this question is communication with the stakeholders doing exploratory testing, collaboration, knowledge sharing, user feedback and observation and error guessing. So all these things are very much necessary if requirements are not available to you. And we have also discussed the scenarios in this particular video when the requirements will not be available with you, right? So that's it for this video. This was one more video that we wanted to add into our playlist, which is becoming a software tester from zero to hero. And I really apologize that I could not update this particular playlist from so many days. So I thought to come up with one more video related to that. And this is a very important interview question. Not only you have to study all these things from interview purpose, but you also have to grab this understanding from the uh, daily testing purpose. So if you are someone who is having a career gap, if you are someone who has not been into the testing, who is switching their job from non-IT to IT, or if you are someone who is not having a real-time knowledge, then these kind of videos would actually help you to get those kind of knowledge and to work in a real-time projects. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates.